Greetings, magnificent souls, to the Lily Bewley podcast, where we have open and honest discussions about ourselves. This is your host, Lily Bewley, and I'm honored to have conversations here with thought leaders, visionaries, healers, and even solo conversations with myself about things I am currently reflecting on. This is a place where we break down, break away, and break through our emotional trauma, allowing ourselves to be healthy, be happy, and live a peaceful life. We are tired of being sick and tired. We are tired, but we are not giving up. We know that there is something magnificent inside of us. And because we are fighting daily, hourly, and by the minute, fighting ourselves, our kids, our spouses, we have to do things differently. We have to break the cycle. We don't have a million chances. We have to be happy now. We have to find a way. So how do we do that? How is that possible? If you look around at what society is telling you, they tell you that what we're doing is impossible. Yet it's happening every single day. And it's happening through the practice and the love that we call awakening the magnificent soul. We are all magnificent souls. And these are our stories of healing. Today in episode 99, I welcome Anne Ribley to the show to chat about our true souls and nourishing worthiness. Don't forget to let me know your thoughts about this episode or anything you would like me to cover on future podcasts at epiphanyvault.com. Remember, it is a safe place and I would welcome the discussion. And also a request, if you are enjoying the show, please rate and share and review so we can get the word out y'all to more and more souls who want to heal and on to the show today. My guest, Anne Ribley is an accomplished writer, creative entrepreneur, business owner, screenwriter, cheerleader of the soul, and mom of two sons. She helps high capacity givers of our world, like healers, coaches, teachers, doctors, nurses, yoga instructors, mothers, fathers, activists, and leaders connect deeper within their soul source power at the heart of all that matters in their lives or in business. She is an author for the upcoming book, Soul Stamina, and I know you're going to enjoy this conversation today with Anne Ribley. All right, Anne, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to have this conversation with you today. Yes, I'm excited to be here with you, Lily. I just so respect all your work that you're doing and Um, your whole voice in the world that's so needed. Oh, thank you. Um, So I, we've been friends for a while. It's been a while. We have known each other for a while and um, I was pretty involved with your work. Uh, What was that? Maybe five or six years ago. It's been, it's been a minute. I know. I always, tell, I always tell everybody that it was a unique um, working relationship that we came together mm-hmm. and how after, you know, when that expired, we were like, we still really like each other and we remain friends. And then we actually met in person and it's all yeah. just wonderful. And the connection has been strong just from the get go. Yeah, it really has. And I think, you know, I don't think I've ever told you this though. There's going to be a little bit of surprise here too, but I think that actually your work was a big introduction for me at the time. And you know, my history, everybody that's listening mostly knows my history with my relationships and whatnot, but, um, it was one of the, the first kind of entry points for me, as far as like personal development work and personal growth work. And you've been in the game for so long and it's oh, just, yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Great. Good to that's have you. Great. Good to, yeah. Good to hear that Lily. Yes. Yeah. Oh, good. So well, then I'll, I'll, I'll share when it comes up, like where you're, you're just who you were helped influence my work. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're just going to brag each other on each other the whole time. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> so, um, you focus on so many areas and, and you've been in the game for like a long time. Um, for sure. How many years have you been in personal development, personal growth? Like you started writing when you were well, I, I always say, I always say, yeah, I started writing when I was 20 because I had a life and health newspaper, lifestyle mm-hmm. newspaper. But what I always say is that my work in transformational work began when I was two, when I got run over by a riding lawnmower. Mm-hmm. And that is like, okay, now I have to be in the game of what does it mean to transform and accept life and what's happening? 
Wow. Yeah. Well, do you want, would you like to share that story? Cause I, I was hoping that we would get into it at some point. And I know that we've talked about this, about this before, <laughs> about, um, yeah. you know, on this, when we've had our coffee dates about using our voice and how important that our story is. And I, um, you know, I, I would love to, to, to hear like, where did this work begin for you? Yeah. Well, I always say that it began when I was two and mm-hmm. I was run over by a riding lawnmower in a home accident. And then it, mm-hmm. after that, it led to eventually a bunch of corrective surgeries. And then from there, um, it left, it ended up at a partial amputation by the time I was 13. And wow. so of my leg that was injured and, you know, it consumed so much of my childhood of the accident that I felt like there was always this part of me that was just done with talking about it because I felt like it took up so much life space. And then I was at Brendan Burchard's Expert Academy. This was, I think maybe uh, six, no, it's like seven years ago. And I was, you know, and I get asked this all the time, oh, did you hurt your leg? Because a lot of times people can't tell the injury because, you know, I have high functionality anyway. Mm -hmm. My baseline's really high. And even like conventional medical doctors say that they don't know how I'm walking without being on heavy duty Mm painkillers. And so this is a lot of the testament of the power of what we hold and our, and our ability to transform. And we're more than what we think that it's even possible for ourselves. And we don't have to believe in something that boxes us into some confinement. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, with all of that, you know, I just function as if this, you know, I haven't been injured and it's not the story that defines me. Mm -hmm. And I was, so I get asked this all the time. And especially since it was a childhood accident, it didn't, it doesn't bother me when people ask. But the thing of it is, is when I say I was run over by a lawnmower, people like they gasp and I'm like, no, it's okay. It's okay. Mm. I was at, I was going to the bathroom and someone said to me, we're waiting in line because there was a long line. And she said to me, oh, did you hurt your leg? And I said, oh no. I said, I was, you know, run over by a, a riding lawnmower. And then she felt like, oh, she started apologizing for asking me. And I'm like, no, it's okay. I, mm. I said, no, it's, it's fine. I have high functionality and my life is great. You know, this is what I said to her. And then we left and, you know, out of the bathroom and, and went on our way to the whole, you know, convention conference that we were at. And then we ran into each other again in the bathrooms later. And this was several hours later. And she said to me, I haven't stopped thinking about Mm. what you said. It's so inspiring. Mm. And that's when it really hit me that, you know, this, what, what I've overcome and the story that has happened to me, um, it can feel that way about that. It's taken up a lot of my life, but it is part of my story and it Mm. is part of what I've overcome and withholding that and not sharing that, you know, I actually robbed someone else of the gift of what that can give to them. And I know. So, yeah. So this is where like, I'm definitely, I don't want to say quick to talk about it, but I'm just totally like, let's get into it. And, and because it is part of the story of where I've come from, it's not defined to me, but Mm -hmm. it is part of the journey. And I think that's really important to Mm -hmm. like own your journey, own your life. You don't have to run from it. Yes. A hundred percent. You know, we've talked about this too, like I said, offline and it's like, I feel like it's, it's a new, a new level when you, when you can really, like you're saying, like, just own who you are, own what's happened to you, own your, your, like your resiliency and your strength and your, your worth. And we're probably going to talk about worthiness today, you know? And so it's just, yeah. Uh, incredible. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Um, so I'm wondering, you talk a lot about the true soul and I'm wondering for you, what does that mean? Um, because I, we talk here, like in this space, we talk about, um, like higher self, we talk about, um, aligned self. We talk, you know, it depends on who, you know, who I have on the, on the podcast or what's the kind of stuff that I'm rambling about, Yeah. but what is this, what is this true soul that you, um, that you achieve? I'm, I'm assuming in your life and that you help other people achieve in theirs as well. Well, this goes back to with the accident that happened to me, you know, Mm. was very early on that, you know, I was told by my parents, which they're, they're very in the transformational spiritual pioneering 
realm. And so that was helpful in my life to have that influence. And they would say to me over and over again, you are no less than you are completely whole. You are, you know, and it's true. Mm -hmm. Even if a part of my body was, was missing, you are that soul. You are that life that is already perfect and whole. And being told that, you know, from the accident, it's like, it's not something that I have to think about. It's, it lives through me Mm -hmm. because it was never, um, it was never questionable to me that I was any less than because of my accident. I was never any less than because of maybe missing a piece of my physicality. And so with that, this is the part where I feel really strongly about what your true soul is or what you are, is that we are a soul. We have a body, we have a mind, we have emotions, we have a persona, a personality, we have relationships. These are all extensions of an expression through our soul. And Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of times it gets talked to as if we have a soul. And that mm-hmm. makes it like somewhere outside of our true essential self. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I like to refer to. It's the most truest part of you that is, is totally enough, complete and full. And that's where all the stamina, resilience, fortitude, strength, courage mm-hmm. can just come through mm-hmm. and express through who mm-hmm. each of all of us who we all are. Oh, I love that. Go ahead. I was going to say, one of the things I like to give an analogy about is like, we're all like a beautiful diamond. You know, a diamond is like, it's every single one is unique and it emanates through the prison of light in all of its different facets, but things can collect on the diamond and it can get dulled, but it's, but that what collects on it, like you ever clean a diamond, you're like, wow, this is so beautiful. After you see it clean, Mm -hmm. it's just bringing it back to the essence that's already there. And that's what I'd like to think of like all of us. And that's, you know, some of the work that I do is teaching people how to do different releasing rituals and different ways to let Mm -hmm. go and surrender these things that we collect Mm -hmm. or that we're conditioned into but they're, and they can cloud our expression. They can cloud that true essential self, but it's, but that stuff is not us. That mm. stuff is not who we are. Yeah. Oh, so many things that you dropped in there. Um, so many great diamonds. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love that. Lily. <laughs> um, one of them, I, I really connected to that part that you're saying of like, it's not like you have a soul, like that distinction of it's not. And I talk about this too, with like self-love um, and, you know, my, my, I have, you know, pro- projects about self-love and um, it's not just something you go pick up at the grocery store, you know, like it's not something that you can just go shopping online for, or just, you know, yeah. what have you. It's like, I don't know. It feels like to me, and I posted about this today too. It's like coming home. It's like home yeah. self full. Yeah. Yeah. So much good stuff. I always say that, like, I feel the most truest expression that we do with self-love is self-honoring because Mm -hmm. when we truly self-honor, we are in an act of self-love and where does self-honoring come from? It's like really getting to that true essence and that value of what we are at the core of us. Oh, Ooh, yes. So good. Um, tell can you explain a little bit more about blockages and these, these maybe imperfections, if we want to go that route of the the diamond analogy? Um, I think maybe you touched on it, but I don't know if it's something that you want to expand on, like, where do those come from? And I mean, what tools do you, can you maybe give someone like a tool or something like that, that you have to start to unblock, um, if someone is feeling, you know, blocked in their soul or their aligned self. Yeah. Or they're what I'd like to call like, you know, one of the expressions of the, their, the body of their life, whether it be mental, whether it be emotional, Mm. whether it be in the whole, like I call the character, that's the more of the persona of what shapes of who we are, you know, Mm. it still is not that total essence of we are, it's actually can be changed and more into like alignment that it matches where we feel that through true expression of who we are coming through. So one of the ways that I teach people on how to get unblocked is I I teach it through the rhythm of nature and through the cycles of nature, because we, Mm -hmm. our bodies are nature. Like 
we are, we are comprised of nature. And so Mm -hmm. one of the ways that I do is teaching rituals. I mean, so I always say that the quickest way to change a habit is to um, change the ritual that's, and habits will follow it. So Mm. I'm really big on teaching people how to do empowering rituals and how to do things that can help us release, can help us um, shape new ways of being that are, that are aligned. You know, even how we begin and start our day, I always say, if you want to change your, you want to change your life or change your day. You start with changing your day. Just look at how you're bookending it. What's your ritual mm-hmm. in the morning? What's your ritual at the end of the night? And then I also have been teaching around, you know, I have a global community around the world where I've been teaching how to do a full moon ritual of release at the time of the full moon. Cause that's when the, and that's when the, um, the light is shining on the dark. So it's a great time to really tune in and check in naturally with the cycles of nature, you know, Mm -hmm. what needs to be unblocked, what needs to be released. I mean, there's a lot of tools, but this is just one way that I teach people because I think we, the more we can sit and just really um, honor ourselves, we can, we can allow ourselves to begin to heal and transform what does feel heavy what we know are those burdens we want to lay down and release. Mm, yeah. Yes. And I, I can attest to the power of your rituals. You've been, like I said, it's been a really big part of my life for the last, uh, like I said, six or seven years. So it's, it is. And I do agree. I was actually talking to somebody about this today about like, and I don't know if you want to go this way, but um, the, Like for me, I've realized those bookends are like more of like my, my internal, like masculine, I guess you could say. So it allows me to be in my feminine through the rest of the day and just to flow and like be in, um, we'll talk about probably inspiration, but just like to be inspired and creative and all of this stuff. And so, yeah, the power of ritual yet in ceremony is super important. Yeah. I also, it's, let's, we can get into talking about inspiration, but talking about like tools, one of the things that I talk about is the four essential elements of manifesting Mm -hmm. and anything that we want to create, but these are tools to change our lives. And this is what you're talking about with inspiration is that I always talk about this. The four essential elements are the, if as model. So if we are going to create something new in our life, you know, we're going to like, we hear this act as if, or if, as it's going to be. So I take the I is our inspiration. What puts us in the spirit of ourselves? That's Mm -hmm. our fire element. And then Mm -hmm. next is our, is the air element is the F for the, if, as it's the, our focus, what's that frequency? How are we focusing? And what is that faith that we have within ourselves, within the world? And sometimes it even requires us to take a leap of faith. So that's, Mm -hmm foundational and that's the air element it's like it's as essential as like the breath of air that we need you know it it really gives life it gives life to the inspiration because it you know fans the flames of the fire and then the the third element is our abilities our actions which is water which is nourishing Mm -hmm. our abilities our actions and whenever we need to have a growing edge or grow something new we always have new abilities and new actions that we need to be bringing about. And so the third, the last one is the earth element. That's the S that's the structure. And that's where rituals sit. That's the, you know, that is like Mm. some of the masculine energy It's where we plant it. That's where the rituals sit. That's the structure. How are we holding this together? How are we putting this in the earth element? So I always say, look to those, those four elements and you'll see like, what do you need to bring more attention to? Is it your focus? Is it your faith? Is it that frequency, you know, that you need to bring air, the air element to, or is it the water? Do you need to be nourishing and watering new abilities Mm. inside yourself? Or do you not have structure? That's the earth element. Ooh, wow. That's a lot of gold right there that you just dropped. Yeah. It's (laughs) all of this is in my, um, my upcoming book, Soul Stamina. Oh, good. Yay. Yeah. Do you yeah. have a release date or anything like that right now? Well, not yet because I'm working on a, a book proposal and I'm going to get a traditional publishing deal. So yay. Uh, yeah. There's a few steps that are taking place right now for that. Okay. Put me in the founder circle, please. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> for sure. Um, so how does, that was great. I, 
um, again, re recently with my healing, a lot of the elements come into play for me and I didn't even know it, you know, and I love how, um, you connect just like, like you're saying through nature, like not only with the moon, but also all these different, um, elements. And so this process, if as right. Yeah. You can go if, as, or as if it's still the same, it works like a circle. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Yeah. Ooh, I love that. So you, you mentioned that it's tied to manifesting. So I, I think that's a good segue to actually to talk about manifesting. Cause it's really something that we have never talked about offline. Yeah. And I, um, would just love to kind of open up that conversation about manifesting. How, how does that process help with manifesting? What is manifesting to you? All of that. <laughs> yeah, it's well, manifesting is really, I, we are all manifesting. Mm. We look around and the life that we are, we are contributing our energy towards and co-creating with is manifesting the life, the <clears throat> manifesting the life that we're living right now. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is, okay, how can I get intentional with what I want to be co-creating, what I want to be creating, what I want to be manifesting? What do I, what do I want to be bringing forth? And that's why I always say the I, like in those elements, that's getting intentional. That's the I is the intention with our inspiration, because that's where we, that's the easiest way to manifest is when we're in alignment with the spirit of us, because inspiration is in the spirit mm -hmm. of who we really are, what mm -hmm. we really have to offer. And we all know when we are trying to manifest something that we don't feel that energy, that's that life energy. That's that fire energy. That's that, you know, that electricity of what's inside of us coming mm -hmm. through us. And we don't feel it. It's hard. It's depleting. And it's much harder to create and manifest from that place because it's not real. Mm -hmm. So I always say that, you know, that inspiration is our, is our guide because we're wired to be inspired. Like our, literally our physiology is set up so that when we're inspired it, all the feel good chemicals begin to fire up, mm. begin to help us take us to where we need to go. So let's say we need it to, let's say we were hungry and we needed to, um, you know, co-create or manifest or get to this place that we knew a, a meal was going to be at. And it's 30 minutes away. Well, if we know, oh, okay, it's going to be 30 minutes and we put our focus that way. Okay. We're only 30 minutes away. We would start to get energy to be inspired to get there. If we were hungry, that's just, mm -hmm. I'm giving that as an example, mm -hmm. because we would know, okay, that's the direction we're going. And all the feel good chemicals would help support us to get there. Cause we'd be inspired. Oh, I'm going to get this nice, warm, great meal in 30 minutes. And I'm so hungry. And so the idea is, is getting into that intentional inspiration of who we are, that begins the first element to make it easy. Mm. So I always say, look to the four elements. That's what you can start to see. Where are you having struggles with what you're manifesting? Because maybe you aren't inspired at all with what you're trying to create. Mm. Maybe you don't have structure. Maybe you have the inspiration. I always tell people too, is that when we reach the area where it's our abilities, that's the A, that's the water. We got to nourish new abilities. we got to bring new things forward from ourselves, new actions. That's where fear can set in. And that's where we can say, oh, I'm scared. And then we go back to, and we don't plug it into a structure to keep ourselves going on consistency and momentum. It's just like you with this podcast, mm -hmm. you have a, you have a, a, a ritual a structure, a system mm -hmm. that helps you do this. Yeah. 100%. And if you, you could be inspired you can have all this um, focus to want to do it and all these abilities to do it and actions. But if you were not consistent in some sort of structure, it would make it hard to get the momentum of that manifesting going for yourself. Mm. Just in that example. I mean, it's like we could apply that to any example in our life. Yeah. So I always say to people when they feel really depleted and they're down and out in a place in life and it doesn't feel like they're inspired because sometimes people feel that way is okay what is start with the earth element that's why i say it goes as if or if as you might not know your inspiration but just start like for example a lot of times when people need to get into shape and i always talk about that's when it takes the most courage you know if they're out if they're out of shape and they want to get into shape that's when it takes the most strength because you got to start believing in yourself and you're not inspired yet 
before it, it's easier once you've reached that and you have that momentum. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, wow, look at how great you are. It's like, no, the real great person showed up day one. <laughs> Mm. have the courage to believe in this beforehand. So come up with a structure, like, let's say, oh, I'm going to start. I'm just giving this as an easy example. I'm going to start working out, going to yoga. It could be anything, you know, and I'm going to do that once a week. It could be a career path too, that this could, uh, same thing could apply to you. You sign up, you come, become part of a program, you get into that program, you become accountable to it. And then what's going to happen is, is your abilities, you're going to start nourishing and watering your abilities to expand, mm -hmm. which is going to start raising the frequency and the focus, which then actually brings you to the inspiration. So yeah. I say it can work, it, that, that's how the directions of it work. It can, wherever you're at. So. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Um, okay. So what would you say, because this was me, and I don't know if we have talked about this, but I had a really, really bad relationship with law of attraction and manifesting when I was in New York mm -hmm. and I have thoughts. Um, I know we actually share, um, a mentor as well. So it comes a lot from what he does too. Mm -hmm. Um, so what would you say if someone has tried the manifesting thing or tried the law of attraction thing and it didn't work? Um, I don't know. What would you say to someone like that? Cause it was me for a long time. I like, you know, I, that's when I really got into the secret and it was frustrating because it's like, think it and it shall be done. Or, um, I don't know all these sayings like, like, uh, right. will it, and you know, all these like sayings, it's like, that. but it, it was very frustrating because I was doing all of those things, but not getting the result. Um, would you say that anything in particular blocks manifesting? Um, or yeah, if you were coaching me at that time, what, what, how would that go? Well, I think this is the, I think that what happens is, is we can through traumas, mm -hmm. through life situations, through conditionings, we can be very splintered and have a lot of fragmentation in our energy, who we are, how we're thinking, what we want. And in that fragmentation, we're not in the full capacity in that core connection of what we want. So we could be striving for something that we think we want through law of attraction, yet we have all these other conflicting energies that are, could be under the surface that we're unaware of, like in our, in our subconscious, which they mm -hmm. say that, you know, 80% of how we're operating is from our subconscious. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get into Bruce Lipton, biology of mm -hmm. belief. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I feel like that the, um, sometimes that the law of attraction idea could be coming from a place of compensation. And I'm not saying that's what you were doing, yeah. um, fragmentation or something that we're trying to get to find our safety and our baseline mm -hmm. in order to feel okay. That is all like, um, needy desire lines from the subconscious of something that's unmet or wounded. And that's what creates the fragmentation. So the more we can, that's why there is some power in releasing and there is some power in doing the mm. work to know what these, what these pieces are that are driving of maybe our splintered self and collecting ourselves. I mean, it's not like, it's not like, um, there, it's not like, a one and done, like, oh, okay, you, you clear this. And then you're, you, you have this life just doesn't work that way. I always say that, you know, I, mm -hmm. if I knew that there was a way to do eight second abs, like sign me up, I would do it. <laughs> That's what the marketing people are like promoting everybody to do to chase that instant gratification, but it's a process. And I feel like the more congruent and you pull in like the wholeness of yourself, and you're offering up that wholeness, like let's say in what you're looking to attract and be into what I like to call resonance and rapport mm -hmm. and, you know, some sort of reciprocity or reciprocation with this is when we're getting into that core body, like um, what I call like the character body. It's that it's the soul of it's the breath of our soul. It's how we're mm -hmm. giving and receiving our energy and really knowing that in sync in an in sync way. 
So it's like, okay, if it's the breath of our soul, how we're giving and receiving our persona, our character, there's a lot of people they're saying yes when really they mean no. <laughs> they're saying no when they should be saying yes. And what are those drivers? You know, it's like really getting to know that. So there is that congruence. So when we're talking about, okay, the law of attraction, like there's a lot of crew we got to get on board with inside of ourselves. Mm. Yes. And I love how you say that it takes time because I was not giving myself time at that point in my life, for sure. Yeah. Not only did I, but I was like, like I said, pretty naive in the healing journey. I, you know, was really just trying to, um, like, like what you're saying, like there's a, a, like a fragmented, I guess, in, in your words, part of me that was craving these things that that part wanted, but it wanted from a, like, like what you said, like a wounded place, um, which is, yeah, we hear, we talk about trauma, you know, emotional trauma here too, which is, sounds like exactly what that is. Or a yeah, lot of I, I say like the emotional, uh, like the grasping needy self. Yeah. Mm. Which is not our most truest sourced self. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm a big believer in too, is when something's not working and, but in our mind, we think it should be, and we, and we want it, it, it could be life protecting us. I mean, we could really be being protected. You know, one of my all time, um, most popular mantras that I've ever shared and, and offered is, you know, that which supports me will boldly step forward and that which doesn't will gracefully step down. And that means willing to accept it. So we could think we're, we're trying to create something, create something. And it's like, okay, what is the message if it's not coming through? What is it that, you know, what is it that we need to nourish and mm -hmm. the abilities and hear of what the answers are? And sometimes it's like, that's a graceful step down and trusting that place of life doesn't mean mm -hmm. that it's going to be withheld. That's also like, if we can kind of come to the understanding that there's not a withholding universe, that we're just getting to get into alignment. We're going to trust the flow of what's meant for us mm -hmm. and create very from true. that place. Yeah. yeah, very true. Yeah. And the, uh, just what you're saying, that feels very self-honoring, right? It's just to be yeah. like, okay, um, this may be not for me, but let's open up the door to something else that may be for me or to test and to try and to be kind and compassionate with yourself as yeah. we do that. That's why I, when I created that mantra, that which, what, that which supports me boldly steps forward, because it was at a time in my life when so many things were coming undone. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it was my marriage of 18 years at that time. I had two small children and all of our, everything that we had with the business and the house, housing and, you know, our houses, we had multiple houses, all that was coming undone. And I didn't have the answer. So I just started like, I wanted it to boldly step forward. And that's a such a great, you know, cause our words have weight in the world and mm -hmm. that becomes the frequency that creates matter. Words matter is what I say. And so when I was saying that, which supports me boldly steps forward, that's how I would know. Okay. I want to know without a shadow of a doubt, this is the right direction. This is what's for me. This is, this is part of my path. This is what's needed for me. And if it's not, just let it gracefully step down. And if it does not turn mm -hmm. out, it's like, instead of fighting and resisting against that, trusting in that process, like, okay, mm -hmm. this is not for me. And it's hard when it's things that we get really attached to. Yeah, it is. That's what I was going to say I'm in my head. You must've been reading my brain, but you know, that it's, you know, it sounds easy in words but I, I mean, I do love that phrasing because boldly and gracefully, they just mm, bring it so much like juice, yes. but it is like, it's, it is a lot harder than, than, yeah, it's, it's just, it's, it's a difficult process. Um, and yeah, I've had somebody on the pod, podcast before that has said manifesting is a healing process, which I believe, you know, like I'm, I'm, you know, big on the healing path and um, teach others to do the same. And it's, it is really, really difficult when for most of our lives, those fragmented parts of ourselves have been louder than what our true self is. But I think um, I love that, that reframe um, with like, yeah, maybe it is something showing you that this isn't really meant, this isn't really yours. And, you know, is there a way for you just maybe to like, if you're holding on with five fingers, maybe just let one finger go or something <laughs> like that, you know, like some little bitty let yeah. go that you can. And it, I think it's more to, and than just like, again, like 
I'm checking myself a little bit. It's more than just letting go, which I feel like is also big out there in the world of, oh, just let it go. And again, it's not that easy. So let's just, right. let's talk, you know, let's talk about the messy middle. Like, why do people not talk about the messy middle? I know, you know, yeah. yeah. That's why I was saying I'm, I'm so big on like that the person who shows up on day one of the gym declines the drink, has the hard conversation. It's that is an incredibly strong person because mm. it takes a lot to get to go against the propensity of all the past energy that had brought has brought to that moment in time and to say I'm turning and going a different way that feels right right now it's an immense amount and I I look at like how our world just like celebrates when we see people like on the top of the mountain with all of their money in their perfect shape. And it's like, aren't they incredible? It's like, you know, who's really incredible? Mm -hmm. That person who decided, you know, on that day, okay, I'm not having a drink. And then they built that time. Mm -hmm. That person who decided to go to the gym against all of the self-defeating feelings that they had against themselves, but they found that inner strength. And so that whole journey is the messy middle. And we're all somewhere in the messy middle of some part of our healing growth. Yeah. And it is, Oh, I love talk about courage too, because courage <laughs> is, um, I don't know. I feel like there's a difference between, is there a difference for you or like a distinction between being brave and being courageous? Well, I really believe that we have a core connection to our courage. It's something that can come mm. through us. It doesn't have to come from us. And okay. so to be brave, I think there's more of knowing what the situation, knowing what a situation is calling for either in, a, you know, a very quick second, or we have to work ourselves up to it and we have to muster up the energy to do it. I always say that, you know, I was run over by a lawnmower. But the hardest thing I ever had to do was to decide to get a divorce because the, because it was not something that was happening to me that I had to muster up the courage, you know, to make a bold, brave move or to do something brave. It was when I had to decide it and it had to come from within me. I had to initiate it. It was the hardest thing I had to do. It felt mm -hmm. so hard. Mm -hmm. You're right. That is courage. It yeah. is courage, especially after first, you know, um, for like, you're saying, uh, a long time of like saying no, when you want to say yes, or saying yes, when you want to say no, it's like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's such an internal, Ooh, I just feel so much power just talking about it. It's just like an internal kind of like reckoning almost. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. Um, let's move to worthiness. Um, did we, have we talked about, you know, I love what you talk about and you have some programs on this about nourishing worthiness. Is that, is that something that we've covered or like, what is, what is this, um, this, I love just nourishing. I just love that word, but like, what is this, what is this about for you? Yeah. I feel that people think that they have a worthiness issue. And, uh, and something I wanted to talk to you about too, was the, the concept of nourishing worthiness. And like we talked about before, I'm super into self-love work and self-worth work. What is this? What is this concept for you? And I love the word nourishing. What is this nourishing worthiness? Yeah. It's about really returning, remembering what's already inherent. Like what we, like what I say is our worthiness, we've already inherited it. It's not mm. something we have to hustle for. It's not something we have to earn. And a lot of times I think people blame a lot of issues that they're having as if they have a worthiness issue and it makes them as if you're flawed. Yes. And now I do think that we could be um, blocked in how we're expressing or how we're receiving our natural right and gift and deservingness of worthiness because it is a natural God-given right to be worthy, to be worthy mm -hmm. of life and to be, to be worthy in this life. I mean, that is how we're born. And I think that it gets either that it gets clouded, gets conditioned. It's very insidious that the way it works, even in the whole marketing 
and culturally is that this feeling of that we're not enough and yes. that we need something in order to be worthy or complete. And it, and it can be so slowly, it's a very systemic um, poisoning <laughs> is what I'll call it. Cause that's what it is because it's taking away from the well being that already exists. If you look at how a newborn comes into the world, they are worthy to be alive. They're worthy to express, to have their needs met, to set themselves up to thrive. Yes, 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 yes. All of that. Yes. Yeah, so worthiness, I feel is like a remembering it's a reconnecting to something that's already there. Mm. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm launching a, uh, 21 day w- nourishing worthiness experience where you're using mantras and the power of these four essential elements I talked about to really nourish that natural inherent innate expression that's already available to us, that's already there and have that become like, imagine, like if we just spent 21 days, I mean, we could, we could, there's a lot more we could do, but just giving that attention, I always say that our attention is our superpower, Mm -hmm. you know, wherever we're putting our attention, that is what's going to be fueling the intentions of what we are creating and what we're giving and receiving in our world. And so imagine putting you know, just a focus on nourishing our worthiness consecutively, you know, creating the ritual of it, because again, it begins to build momentum. And so there's a lot to worthiness. There's a lot of aspects to it, Mm -hmm. but it's, I feel it's, it's that natural well of our being is worthiness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that so much. And I think what you pointed on too, is that, um, it's one of my biggest kind of gripes about the personal development world is that it really, like you're talking about this marketing and all this stuff, it really, you know, it's like either do this or you are just going to suck forever. Or, you know, um, I've, I think we've talked about this before, but I remember reading like, um, what is it like the miracle morning or something like that. And I literally felt like he was yelling at me through that book. It was like, either you wake up at four 30 and you do all of this. If you don't, your day is going to be really shitty. And that was it, you know? And that is like, and what I've realized is that personal development can also, like you're saying, it can lead to this like shame of like, we're not enough. So I have to keep doing, I have to keep consuming. I have to keep like having these courses and all these masterclasses in my inbox and not complete them or like all of this stuff. Um, and I've really come to this point now where like, if like, I'm really kind with myself, if I don't complete something or, you know, if, if I show up that showing up is enough, you know, and it's like, it's just, just being open, what you're saying, like being open to whatever nourishing aspect of what I'm showing up for is going to, hit and land where it needs to. And I'm going to learn what I need to learn while I'm there. Yeah. It's interesting Mm -hmm. that just the example that you're, that you gave, this ties into some of, you know, the, the depth of what I also feel about the law of track, the law of attraction Mm -hmm. is that the more that we're high and even trauma, the more that we're hijacking our sympathetic nervous system in order to be performative, in order Mm -hmm. to be worthy, in order to hustle, to get something to happen. And it's like, there's a time and a place that we need to be activating our, our sympathetic nervous system, you know, to do something, but we're on overdrive. This Mm -hmm. is why people are having adrenal fatigue. And it's, it's why people, there's so much burnout and exhaustion because we're operating at a level that is not sustainable, number one. And if you got into like a um, like the worthiness and the trust of your life and your own timing and your synchronicity and showing up and honoring it, self, self-honoring, doing things from self-honoring, self-loving capacity with inside yourself, then what you're doing is you're actually dialing down <laughs> this hyperactive, sympathetic, you know, high stress cortisol levels within the body that just traumatizes the nervous system more. You're mm-hmm. dialing that down. So you want to activate more of the parasympathetic in that. So I always say that, you know, when you're truly doing like the work of collecting yourself, honoring yourself and your nervous system, that there is a flow that can happen with the law of attraction where you're in more of like getting into that parasympathetic nervous system, which is Mm -hmm. what does dial down the, down the stress. Mm -hmm. And 
that natural sense of well-being, that that sense of like rest, trust, relaxation sets us up so that we can be creating from a, uh, a fullness of our own worthiness that's mm-hmm. natural, that's mm-hmm. already inherent in us. Yes. Oh, I could tell you. I just, I love the way you, you just bring things so clear for me. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, thanks, <Lily. laughs> You're welcome. Um, so we're going to close up a little bit today, but, um, one thing I always like to ask before we close, and then you can, if you want, you can, um, kind of go into what you're working on right now. Um, like you mentioned the challenge and then also where people can find you. Um, but as you know, I'm, um, you know, I do a lot of work with love and relationships. Mm-hmm. How does your work how would that like kind of meld into the concept of love and relationships? I'm assuming that there's a lot of, like we're talking, it's a pretty broad spectrum, right? Like true self, um, self-honoring that has a lot to do with love. Um, but I want to kind of hear from you as far as like how, how this, um, all these good little juicy nuggets that, that you've been putting out can, can, uh, look like in love and relationships too. Well, um, I mean, there is, I mean, I do have like a beautiful love story of the relationship that I'm in right now that yes, did. <laughs> it happened through everything that I'm, te- you know, everything that I'm sharing. I mean, this is like, I've walked and lived through all of this. It's like, after I went through my divorce, I spent several years with, you know, having young children and thinking, how am I even going to find somebody, you know, where I was living was in a small town. And, you know, I created a mantra. I did, did love will come to my home. And I started Mm. saying that. And, and it was a way to, again, allow me to nourish myself into that worthiness that love will come to my home. I was doing the work in other areas of my life as well. And it allowed me to trust that what was right for me was going to be showing up when it was the right time. And So every time I would think that I had a way to calm myself, that's back to that, you know, giving Mm -hmm. myself permission to, to not be needy, graspy and to relax into my, you know, like more of a parasympathetic nervous system, trusting, relaxing state. And so I said that over and over again, and then lo and behold, you know, over 11 years ago, we're together now, we're still together now. Um, I started working with somebody online on a project and it, in, we, you know, and then we fell in love basically mm. it's really what happened. And we've been together since. Mm-hmm. And I would say that, you know, the biggest thing that him and I, when we first got together, is we kept saying, we're going to, we're going to empower our lives on 11. And that was all about like, not turning it up to like, you know, mm-hmm. climbing to the top of the mountain and getting everything. And we were going to be great. It was all about attuning to that place of the oneness of who we are on the inside, matching with how we felt and how we wanted to be living in our relationship on the outside. Mm. And so that's, a, that's our work in progress is really is like empowering that vibrational oneness between each other. And we call that empowering 11. So that's how that's always been like our, um, it can sound really fun and cliche, but it's actually very deep and meaningful and mm. it's the work it's the work that we've been doing in our relationship. I love that. You know, I love that. It's like, you know, my people that puts the things into practice in their real life. Those are my people. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Exactly. So gorgeous. I know. Well, it's so wonderful seeing all the work that you've done too, Lily. It's so mm, good. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So you have some things coming up. Um, let us know what you have on the horizon and then also where, where can people find you? Well, you can find me at annribley.com. You can find me at Ann Ribley on Instagram and on Facebook. Um, and what I have coming up right now is I'm launching the 21 day nourishing worthiness, uh, challenge experience. So you can find that on my website. Also, um, I'm also launching the healer, uh, a workshop for the healers and helpers mm. find their right attraction blueprint for I think the call is out right now that we need the healers and helpers of the world to step forward Mm -hmm. and start sharing their gifts and their talents and what they have to offer. So we can bring the healing that's so needed in this world. So I am teaching a workshop on that, on 
for the healers and helpers on how to let go of the struggle, attract the right people to their business without all the complicated strategies that the marketing gurus are promoting. Yes. Oh, that is so needed. That is so needed. Well, I so appreciate you coming on. This is a long time coming and, and yes. uh, here we are. I appreciate you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Lily. This was great. My pleasure. Thank you, man. Y'all, when I say that Anne is one of the first people that I met in the personal development world, it is the truth. In fact, I wasn't even ready to hear her message at that point in time. You know how like if you um, get kind of the same information again and again, again, it finally downloads, which is like one reason why I love this podcast is because we continually talk about personal growth work. When you are ready, it will be there, but it is really surreal having her here in my space and I'm honored that it's manifested the way it has. Also, one announcement today before we close and forward this to your single friends, y'all, who want to date with confidence so they can find epic magnetic love. So my new program is open for women who want to find their person without the dating BS that a lot of people go through. This is for people who, are, who want to call in not normal love, but extraordinary love. It's the method and the process that I have used to make dating effortless and having high quality options instead of wading through the not so great quantity that is out there. And the link to all of this info, including the step one of the process, which is selecting a time for a quick 10 minute hello call with me. It's all in the show notes, all the information. But in the meantime, know that I love you. I support you. And I'm so, so glad that you are here with me. You are beautiful and you are completely enough. I'll see you next time in big love.